Driving almost four hours in order to be trackside by 9 a.m. is a tall order. I was pulling such a stunt so I could chase the Yadkin Valley Railroad operating out of Winston-Salem, North Carolina. The crew was on duty at 5.30 a.m. and left Winston an hour later, but I still had two and a half hours between me and the railroad. Finally past Winston, I was making my way into the valley, evidenced by the beautiful rolling landscapes. The road eventually turned to dirt and spat me out in a town called Salome, where I only had seconds to spare. What an incredible lineup. A Knoxville Locomotive Works SE32C, former BNSF Executive SD70 Mac, and an XCSX SD60M. These were going to be an absolute thrill to chase on this overcast morning. Add to that my first sighting of fall colors and you can only imagine the smile on my face. Continuing west from Salome, the next public access point is the town of Rockford, where the tracks barely stand taller than the kudzu. The valley is so quiet and peaceful that the roar of YV-1's 11,618 horses can be heard well before they are seen. Owned by Gulf and Ohio Shortlines, the Yadkin Valley operates weekdays out of Norfolk Southern's Yard in Winston-Salem. YVRR trackage doesn't begin until Rural Hall, where the railroad either continues 30 miles north along the former Atlantic and Yadkin Railroad to Mount Airy, or 63 miles west along once Southern Railway tracks to Roaring River. Southern saw service out to Wilkesboro at one point, but that's nothing more than a memory in 2020. From Rockford, I leapfrogged the train to Crutchfield, where the railroad temporarily stores some rolling stock in an old feed mill house track. The Knoxville Locomotive Works, or KLW, is also owned by the GNO, who has elected to place the 3200 in service on the Yadkin Valley Railroad. The SE32C is a work of art, EPA certified to meet Tier 4 requirements, but that's just the beginning. It's also billed as the cleanest locomotive in the world, reducing nitrogen oxide, carbon monoxide, and other emissions by a combined 94% and fuel consumption by up to 65% when compared to conventional diesel electrics. 3200 was the first SE32C completed and is basically KLW's demonstrator unit with the only other prototype operating on CMEX property in Victorville, California. KLW has also produced multiple iterations of clean four axles, which operate on freight and commuter railroads in California, Maryland, New Jersey, New York, and Pennsylvania. I was feeling pretty lucky chasing such a rock star through the mountains of North Carolina as I set up at the trestle near Birch for my next encounter.
In addition to the neat little trestle, Birch is home to the Purdue loadout, one of a few on the YV system. Norfolk Southern Train 50Z drops these 85-car grainers off in Winston about once a week, and the YV-1 takes them further west, made up of multiple blocks destined for either Purdue or Wayne Farms in Birch, or the giant Tyson feed mill in Roaring River. Today's YV-1 is going as far as Roaring River, but slowing through Birch in order to spot cars at Wayne Farms and drop off a couple in the adjacent siding. The switching duties allowed me ample time to move west and get airborne with a look at Vulcan's giant quarry just outside of Elkin. Vulcan is an avid rail customer, so I found it a little odd that there's no rail service here. One explanation might be that the quarry sits much higher than the railroad tracks, making it impossible to reach. Not much time to hypothesize though, as YV-1 came around the corner as if on cue by the drone. As awesome as it was to be chasing the 3200, I couldn't overlook YV-1's trailing power. BNSF Executive Max have always been some of my favorite locomotives, so when Golf in Ohio acquired one for use on the YVRR, I knew a chase was in store. The holding company also purchased 14 CSX SD60Ms, six of which ended up in the valley. The three engines made for an absolutely stellar lineup on the day's train, possibly one of the best I've ever seen. It takes a lot to beat a two-of-a-kind rebuild, Grenstein and SD60M, all working in tandem through the valley. This was one of those things you just can't make up even if you tried. Being situated in a desolate, mountainous part of North Carolina, the Yadkin Valley Railroad is often overlooked by rail fans for reasons I do not know. Yanking 85 car grain trains through the valley with fall colors abundant and one of the motliest assortments of power I had ever seen was enough to get me out of bed at 4.45 in the morning. This is one of the reasons I love short line and regional railroading, as they offer a refreshing departure from Class 1 main lines, both in their operations and oftentimes motive power. I mean, seriously, where else in the world would a lineup like YV1s exist? Approaching downtown Elkin, the engineer was taking his train into the siding in order to drop off about 30 cars. There's only so much room in Roaring River, so what's left after the drop off near Birch is split up into smaller blocks, delivered one at a time to Tyson. 
As YV1 eased down the rickety number two track, I got into downtown and set up with seconds to spare. Thirty two hundred was completed by KLW in 2015 and had only made a handful of test runs prior to its introduction to service in late August of 2020. Around that time was when GNO acquired the 9540, so seeing both of these brutes on the rails together was a treat and a half. Stopping in downtown to uncouple from the block in the sighting, the trio posed next to the local power used weekdays to spot cars at the eight or nine customers around Birch, Elkin, and Roaring River. It wasn't long until YV-1 was ready to depart with 27 cars left for the Tyson feed mill. Following the train west of Elkin, I pulled off about 11 miles later in Rhonda. Curiously enough, this is the only part of the line I noticed seemed to be on welded rail, but it's probably nothing more than a tease for the YV-1 crew, as they had been rotating between 25 and 10 mile an hour limits all morning long. Something about this angle in Rhonda made it my favorite from the morning. Not sure if it was the neat trackside driveway, the bushes framing the right of way, or the quick pace of 3200, but I really like how this scene came out. Evidently, the SE32C is performing quite well on the railroad, making me hopeful for some more to come from KLW. One of their claims to fame is that their clean locomotives don't require the use of genset technology, which can be a pain to maintain. Putting out 3,218 horsepower, the locomotive operates using a single prime mover manufactured by the Rolls-Royce MTU division. The single engine with 3,200 horses rolling on the AAR Type-C axle arrangement makes it easy to figure out where the locomotive's model name came from.
I pulled off one last time before Roaring River to watch YV-1 negotiate one of the tighter turns on the line. It was an easy jump from here as I got perched up in Roaring River with just enough time. Not much can dwarf three six axles, but Tyson was the first mill of this magnitude I had ever seen. After dropping the inbounds, the engines reversed light onto an outgoing cut of cars in order to clear space within the house tracks for the new arrivals. Switching would continue in Roaring River for a while longer, but I wanted to make it back to Wilmington for dinner time and was thrilled with what my day had yielded thus far. Thanks for rail fanning with me today. I hope you enjoyed this awesome chase of the Yadkin Valley Railroad as much as I did.